Hello there, it's Dr. Grant Pagden. So uh, today I wanted to give you a little bit of an update on COVID-19. Now I know everybody's getting a little bit tired of hearing all the news and uh, the restrictions and so on, uh, but today I wanted to give you my take on uh, what's going on with the vaccines as well as uh, a little bit of encouragement about the things that we can do to help to prevent spread. And finally, I'm gonna give you some tidbits for what you could do if you do end up getting in contact with somebody who is positive for COVID-19. Uh, so first of all, I wanted to tell you about the vaccines. Now I learned something very interesting this past week from Dr. Bonnie Henry, when she explained the rationale for why the province of British Columbia has decided that we could go as much as 42 days between doses of vaccine. My understanding was when these things were first produced, the recommendation of 21 days between doses for Pfizer and 28 days between doses for Moderna was designed to be the optimal interval. And that's actually not true. The reason those intervals are so short is because these vaccines had to be getting through the research process so quickly that they tried to make the interval as short as possible to get them to market as soon as possible. So really what happens is when you have the first dose of the vaccine, your immunity will be about 90% effective in the six weeks following that first dose. So really we would have up to six weeks to get the second dose in. And actually there's some argument to be made for delaying it closer to the six weeks rather than having it a little bit too soon down at the 21 or 28 day interval. Keep in mind that it does take some time for your immune system to build a response. And we're just simply trying to capitalize on that initial response with a booster dose somewhere out to about 42 days after the first dose. Now the most recent bulletin that I had from Interior Health indicates that this uh, delayed dosing has been approved by Canada's National Advisory Committee on Immunization as well as immunization experts at the World Health Organization. So don't be too worried if your second dose is delayed by up to 42 days. Next, I wanted to remind you about some of the preventative things that we can do as individual citizens. Now you must remember that the risk reduction strategies you use in your own personal life are all additive. So we need to focus on continuing to use masks, continuing with our social distancing, staying home except for essential trips. We need to avoid gatherings. We need to avoid enclosed spaces. We should be washing our hands frequently. And as Dr. Henry says, you should wash your hands as if you had just been chopping some jalapenos and you have to change your contacts. So washing hands vigorously. Uh, try to avoid touching your eyes, nose, mouth, and frequently disinfect high touch surfaces. It's really important that we persist with these sorts of interventions for the next several months because we know that it is going to be quite a while before the majority of the population around us gets access to the vaccine. Now finally, I wanted to give you some tips on what you could do if you end up in close contact with somebody who tests positive for COVID-19. I have a list of things that I would want you to try to get started on right away. First thing, vitamin C, 2,000 milligrams a day. Second would be vitamin D, 6,000 units a day. Next would be zinc, 40 milligrams. You could do a baby aspirin, 81 milligrams. You've heard me talk about Immunocal, which is a booster for glutathione. That supports the immuno, immune system. And I would recommend one to two pouches per day of Immunocal. And finally, there is some evidence for an antacid called Pepsid or Famotidine at a dose of 20 milligrams a day. So all of these things have been studied and have been recommended as ways to support your immunity if you're in close contact with somebody who has tested positive for COVID-19.